the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There are so many things that we could take out of the Gospel and have as the center of our of our sermon as the lesson for the day. But that last sentence in today's gospel is the one that so often comes to my mind. And it's a frightening, frightening word. And that is that many who are first will be last. And those who are last shall be first. It's very difficult. It's very fear fearful if we really think about that. And we are so bright, we are so intelligent that we think that we have reached such heights because we have been fooled by our technological advances and by the lightning speed of those advances how quickly the next thing is upon us the newest thing is upon us especially in the technological world it seems that Day after day, something new is discovered. Something we didn't know before is brought to our attention. And yet, I think about somewhere I read, I think it was about 1920, where it was proposed that the patent office be closed. Because there really isn't anything else left there to invent. There's no more technology that is to be presented. Think about how many things have been discovered since 1920. Think about how many things have been discovered in the last week. And we will see that our, what we think, when we think that we are so bright. But we even extend this so-called intelligence. We extend it even to God's business. How so? We presume to judge. We presume to condemn. Not only judge, but condemn. People who we believe are not following God's path. People whose actions are not according to Scripture. People who we barely know. And even those who we know. Before we ourselves know ourselves, as our great philosopher Socrates told us, the first thing you need to do is to know yourself. Never mind everybody else. Attend to your own soul. But no, we would rather spend time talking about other people. And rarely is this gossip about the good things that this one or that one has done, but rather about the mistakes, the evil things, the things that are not socially acceptable or according to scripture that have been done by this or that person. Forgetting that when we judge, and especially when we condemn a person, 
not an action. An action, we can say that action is wrong. But to say that that person is a sinner and is going to be punished because of that, then we are taking the place of God. And that's blasphemy. Our Lord has told us with the prophet Isaiah, as far as the heavens are from the earth, so far is my mind, my, so far are my thoughts from your mind. Who can measure that distance? And yet we presume to do it every time. Every time that we judge and condemn. We've been taught so much differently. First of all by the Holy Scriptures. And then by the words of our, our fathers. One of them has said, sure, I saw the action, the sin, but I did not see his repentance. I did not see how he went into his room and wept and condemned himself for that mistake that he made today. All I saw was the sin. And another father who has told us that when we see someone who we think is sinning, we should say to ourselves, him today, me tomorrow. Only in this way can we put the proper proportions and the proper understanding of what it means to judge. We have fooled ourselves. We have taken on to ourselves godlike powers. We have spanned the globe in minutes. Something happening on the other side of the world is made known to us. We have supposedly reached into our closest neighbor, the moon. I'm afraid I myself may seem foolish, but I don't know that that happened. I know what they showed us, but I don't know if any, any of these things have actually happened. Don't trust your own judgment. It's best if we see somebody doing something good that we take note of it and thank God for this goodness. But it's even better if we have no judgment at all. Not whether something is good, not whether something is bad, because even something that may appear good may be being done for the wrong reason. It might cancel out anything that this might be a benefit to this person. He might be doing it for the praise of people. He might be doing it as a sad to soothe his conscience. There are any number of things that would make someone do something apparently good. So don't judge. Leave that to God. Because when he says himself, he who is the judge says that many who are first will be last and the last shall be first. If we think on that, if we meditate on that, then surely fear and trembling should come upon us. Surely we should be afraid to have any kind of judgment. 
any kind of a special condemnation. If you take away that, that teaching from church today, it would have made anything that you did, any sacrifice you made, any expense, anything at all, worthwhile for coming to church today. If you will carry that with you. The sense that we, because of our purity of faith, may think that we are first. There's a chance that we will be last. Because there are others who we don't see who have both faith and works much greater, much brighter, and much more idealistic than ours. In the name of our Lord God, we pray for revealing these things to us ahead of time so that as we live today, we might straighten ourselves, adjust our lives, in our prayer lives so that we can look forward to the, to the last judgment. Look forward to it because I have judged no one. There was a monk who wasn't a very good monk. He missed the services. He lapsed in the fast. He didn't do his duties as a monk. And he lay dying. And the other fathers gathered around him. And one of them had the boldness to say, Father, do you fear the last judgment? Because you and I both know that you weren't a very good monk. He said, Brother, what you say is true. I was not a very good monk. But tell me something. Did you ever hear out of my mouth or in any action of mine any judgment of anyone? And the other monk was forced to admit, no, no, Father, I never heard you say a word of judgment about anyone. Then I am depending on him who said, by the measure that you have measured, you will be measured. And I go confident to my Lord in this way. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be glory, thanksgiving and honor to the ages of ages. Amen. I